What's up, Internet? Brian here. We got uh, the legend of Jeff with me and Death Star Colby. I don't really know. He's a technician somewhere. Look, with the gunners and stuff, he fits the role. But anyways... Yeah. Matt, uh, Matt the radar is, technician. Yeah. Um, we are recording our first uh, podcast, and so we're kind of playing things by ear. We haven't really discussed how we're going to do this, what we're going to talk about. Uh, the idea is just to talk and see where we go with all the bajillion things that we're all interested in. So I will start off by saying, depending on what we get into, they're very well could be spoilers for things. If if you're worried about that, we'll add spoilers in the com or in the uh, description. But uh, it's kind of where we're at. So uh, crazy week this week. So I'll just talk about some random things I've heard about, kind of circle around and then we'll see where it goes from there. But uh, for me, I'm a big uh, pinball fan, in case anyone didn't know, but it was leaked that there's a Mandalorian pinball machine that's going to be teased on May 4th and revealed on May 11th. So did I'm you just, excited. did you just hold a, a Mandalorian like beer cozy up? Like no one knows what the Mandalorian is. Is that, is that what's, ha what's happening here? I want to make sure. Okay. All right. I'm like, I'm like a product shows person <laughs> on, uh, I don't know. I've had a sip of beer, so I'm going to be stupid. See, you're getting, you're getting, you're getting, you're getting lower, but, you're getting uh, lower every time. Cause the first time it was like, a beer and then the last time it was half a beer now it's a sip man come on yeah it's this uh i'm already hammered i had 13 <laughs> sips uh but anyways i'm excited about that so that was cool for me being in the the pinball world that i am how about you jeff anything interesting come up this week in the I mean, media is this where we pronounce our love to each other then we're gonna run off no that was camera. that was off camera man that's oh, okay. we weren't yeah. recording then the bromance is real uh i'm gonna be talking about NFTs, which I don't know what it stands for. I just know I've been making money doing it. Non fungible tokens. It, yeah, it's something that you can buy online, and it's really no proof that you own it. Yeah. Non fungible. <laughs> actually, they're not actually, there's mushrooms. There's proof that you're the only one that owns it. But yeah, it's it's yeah. It's, a whole, it's weird. It's, it's very weird. Yeah. I got into it a couple months ago, and I've made pretty good money with it. So. Colby and I used to be big into the crypto craze, doing uh, Bitcoin mining and stuff. I remember that. Yeah, that was fun. What for was it we used to mine? Zcash? Yeah, you, typically we, like, I did Zcash, a little bit of Zen, um, some Ethereum, but just mostly the... like we're talking about drugs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Future. Um, <laughs> yeah, speaking of, fun, speaking of fungibles, um, but yeah, it's it was cool. I mean, we did it for, what, six months or so, maybe a little bit longer. I mean, I ended up... Yeah. I ended up making a pretty good profit. I ended up selling all my hardware after the fact and ended up not only recouping my investment, but made quite a lot more. But it just got to the point where yeah. five video cards couldn't compete with, uh, you know, with whole farms of, of cards. So, yeah, I want to say I invested probably, I don't know, 600 bucks, 800 bucks in equipment and probably tripled that. Yeah, over the that's, course about, of that six months. that's about where I was. Yeah. Um, I, I think I put in about, I don't know, 1200 bucks towards cards and hardware and stuff. And, it, you know, wound up making a pretty good amount. I kept some of the Ethereum. I've got some a little bit left over from a few years ago. So it's cool just to mess around with. Cool. What about you, Colby? Anything interesting pop up this week? Um, work's been really, really crazy. I've been doing a lot of like physical, like on sites and stuff, um, installs. So, um, but other than that, just been kind of, you know, keeping up with the NFL draft. I know it just started a little bit ago. Uh, we were talking about it earlier. Um, just, you know, my, my wife is at a friend's house tonight. So it's just me and the and the, the little guy. So having a little guy's night in, you know, no, uh, not having to worry about any, you know, chores or anything. So I'm not even wearing pants right now. I'm wearing shorts. Well, that's your, your little guy behind you in the corner, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's my, that's my little guy, Bob the Tuscan. Cool. Well, Jeff, I know you really want to talk about NFTs. You want to dive into that a little bit, talk about your experience so far? Yeah, the only experience that I have is uh, with the Top Shots, the NBA basketball part of the NFTs. It's like trading cards, essentially. That's exactly what it is. If anybody ever played Madden, uh, they have like the Madden cards and stuff. That There's a uh, one of the game modes. You buy packs. And whatever card you get, you get to play with those people. 
Well, okay. on this, you don't get to play with the people, but you buy packs, digital packs. And each card, say they had to actually drop a pack today for $9. And you get three cards out of the pack. Uh, and this this pack, I think they had 300,000. You can only get one pack. Mm-hmm. And it's all digital, just it's in all case digital. anyone missed You don't that. get anything in the mail. There's nothing you can touch or feel. It's just your card, and it's numbered with the serial number. Uh, one through, I think two of them was, uh, you get one of 3,000 or 30,000. And then I had a good card that was uh, one of 12,000. Now I didn't get the number one card. I got pretty low serial number. But I bought that pack today for $9, got three cards. Didn't really, I don't keep up with NBA. Uh, but one of the cards I immediately sold after I opened it. I sold it on the, their marketplace for uh, $39. So I already made a profit right So there. instantly made $30. Instantly. And so as soon as I cards. opened it up, I went back to the cards, seeing how much they were selling it for on marketplace. They, the lowest bid, or the lowest card that was on there was 40 So I priced mine at 39 And four minutes later, it sold. So Yeah, so the... NFTs are yeah NFTs are nuts when I first heard about them it was only a few months ago like the very first time I'd ever even heard the term um, I was watching a, a video from Corridor Digital and they do they are a, a visual effects house and sometimes they have one of their one of their friends on his name is Beeple that's his like online handle and he, every day for the last I think 13 years if I remember correctly he's made a piece of digital art that just is completely random and just yeah what he's feeling that day, you know, and he got in on NFTs really early and he made $60 million selling his art. Um, like over, like, I think like a three week period. And he even had, he's even had like company, he's commissioned companies to make these really cool. Like, like you said, you don't actually, since you're just buying a digital picture, you can't really hold anything, you know? So he commissioned this company to make these really cool, like, loot boxes basically that you get when you buy the the picture and they put it in a little frame and it's like lit up from behind and stuff and it's like it it actually has the serial number like digitized in the box it's really cool you guys i'll, I'll link you that video it's yeah. it's really interesting to watch yeah the first uh my buddy beckett uh, funny story about him i actually met him playing the division the first one and been friends with him gone to a football game with him like met him in real life and real cool guy. Well, he he got into the top shots and was telling me about it. And he sells uh, the little pop figures like you have behind you. Uh, he he goes and buys goes to stores early, buys the rare ones, and turns around and makes a profit. I mean, he's real innovative when it comes to you know buying and selling. That's a big trade. These yeah. Days. I had to, I had to cut myself off the pops, man. I'd walk into Pensacola and be like, Hey, you got pops here. Like I had, I had to <laughs> like, I had to cut myself off. Right. Well, I mean like the resale market. Like oh yeah. Talking about. Like this yeah. shirt. Shoot. Okay. That. So I'm a big, big pinball fan. Again, this is the play field art from the Ninja Turtles pinball machine. That's, that's by cool. uh, Zimby, uh, Zimby by uh zombie Yeti uh, studios. It's an amazing artist, but. Stern Pinball partnered with Walmart and NECA to make essentially a loot box of Ninja Turtle stuff. And it's using all the art from the pinball games. It's like 60 bucks. But before you could find them in stores, they were popping up on eBay for like triple to quadruple the price. And it's like that on almost, especially with the Ninja Turtle stuff. I'm obviously a big Turtles fan, but they release a new figure and they're on eBay before you can ever find them in the store for like four or five times more than what they are new it's like people are just making a living by going in and buying all of them and then reselling all of them it's like that is scalping like with the playstations and stuff so to get back on what i was talking about with beckett he was telling me about the nba top shots and i'm like i don't understand what you're talking about dude like if i'm buying something i want to hold it you know i want i want proof yeah, that i want it on your wall yeah or, you know something, something. And uh, he was like, oh, man, listen, you know, there's NBA play- NBA players that are on the site trying to buy their own cards. Like this one, when they first dropped the hundred dollar packs, because the packs range from like nine dollars to a thousand dollars. But when they first came out, when I first got into it, whenever they dropped a pack, 
if they had a hundred dollar pack, ninety nine dollars, they'd only do ten thousand packs. So whenever they, you got to go to their site. Whenever they say okay, whenever the queue gets up, go on there and click on join the queue. Well, everybody who has the app clicks on the button and you wait until like two o'clock. Say so the drops at two o'clock. So when it hits two o'clock, it randomizes and puts you in a line, a virtual line. If you're not one to 10,000, you don't get a pack. Right. Yeah. Well, that's crazy. The first, the first pack I got was a $100 pack, 10,000 people. And it took me like, I think it was like three hours. And I was at work. I was like, <laughs> dude, I've got to get so. I'm like, back at home, he's like, don't back out of the page. You know, it'll kick you out of line. And so the whole time my phone seemed like every. 30 seconds when it's like turn off. So like, I'm like, keep tapping the phone. Like, okay, I keep. So my screen would stay on. Well, I get the pack and it wouldn't let me open it until the next day. I guess their website crashed or something. So I get home off of work and I'm uh, click on YouTube. And uh, I don't know if you know who Pat McCaffrey is. He's an old cult. Uh, yeah. He's a punter. Player. Yeah. Yeah, he's got a podcast on YouTube. He's hilarious, dude. He's he's great. Well, he's got the the name of the title was like NBA Top Shots. And like I'd never seen any publicity before that. And I was like, oh shit. So I click on it. And he's sitting there and he's got gets an NBA player, you know, on live feed, and they're talking about how they didn't get a pack. They were they were in the virtual line. You snubbed him. Yeah. And you, I'm was, like, it, was it a live show? You should have called in and been like, yo, I got this pack for you, <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, I got the pack. <laughs> well, what's what's crazy is uh I I told Beckett and all my buddies we're uh, now all we're all in it, you know, all of us on the, the Xbox together. Um I told him about it and he was like, dude, that pack is going on eBay right now for eight thousand dollars unopened. The one that you have? Yeah, the one that I got. No I'm way. Like, I'm like, what? So he's sending me these screenshots. So I get on eBay and I'm like, holy shit. Who was in it? Like what player like what players were in it? Like you had a, a chance to get like thirty, forty thousand dollar cards out of this. Oh, got gotcha. you. Okay. Got gotcha. you. So uh I was like, Well, how the fuck do I sell it on eBay? <laughs> yeah, seriously. Why why are you talking to me? Let's sell it. If that's guaranteed eight thousand dollars right Take now it. and I spent a hundred, like it's sold. Yeah. There's your and, gaming uh, computer. Well, he told me he said that uh it's like you can, but you take the risk is whenever because you can, you can gift cards and gift gift people like say I get the get the pack and I would open up the cards and then I would get their screen name like if I sold it on eBay I would get their screen name through the site and then you could gift the cards to people. But then if they don't pay up, you're fucked. Well, here's the thing: if they buy it through uh, eBay, they can say, oh, "Yeah, I want it," and then you sell it to them. Well, then you can go on your phone and go ahead and send them the cards. Well, they can make a dispute with eBay and say that they never received the cards and it's all virtual. There's no proof. You know what I mean? So then it's like becomes uh, a shit show. So I didn't I, sell I, it on eBay. I know they have dedicated places to sell it. Though. Don't they Don't they have like exchanges you can go to that are like accredited places where you can sell the tokens? I've seen that. No, with, I don't with, know. Okay. I've seen that with the art stuff where it's like that you get a certificate of authenticity and all that stuff saying yeah. you own the actual token. Right. So I wound up not selling eBay. I just opened the pack and I believe it was three cards. Uh, I didn't know any of the players. I was like, well, fuck, dude. I just got a shitty ass deck of cards, you know, for a hundred bucks. That you can't hold. And uh, so I look on there and my highest price card, the lowest, the, low, the one that sold for the lowest or was selling for the lowest on the marketplace was like $1,300. So I immediately put my hundred dollars and sold it instantly. Oh, really? You sold it? As soon as I put it on there, I refreshed the page and it was already sold. So I made twelve hundred dollars. Wow. That time. damn, dude! Congratulations, dude. That's awesome. Yeah. When was that? Today. Yeah. So I've started no. This was when I first NFTs. started. This was and that got me hooked. I was like, well, this oh, shit's gotcha. okay. real. <laughs> like, dude, that's how uh, we were with uh, Bitcoin. When yeah. The first time yeah. I sold like a coin, yeah. I was like, holy shit. People when are I buying first, this. What the when fuck I are first, people? When I first, you know, <laughs> mined my very first like Zcash, I was like, I don't like, I still don't understand it. Like, it's just math, you know, and then you sell it and it shows up in your bank account and you're like, all right, it's real. You know? 
<laughs> yeah, that's yeah, re- it's really cool. So I've I've spent I've I've probably been doing this for two and a half, maybe three months, and I've yeah, spent it's very new. Maybe a total total of three hundred dollars uh, within that time, and I've I've cleared probably twenty five hundred. And Damn, I got dude. Courtney into it, and she's she spent about two hundred dollars. She has like eighteen in her account. That's awesome, man. I'm not a basketball up. fan, but I'm about to I, I, I do not. I, I haven't watched a basketball game since I was in high school. So you're I not. You're not missing much. You know? I'm just not a. Yeah, I'm just not a basketball fan. That's insane. <clears throat> that's so nuts, that's man. what. But they have they have garbage pail kids. Yeah. Uh, Street Fighter cards. I mean, they've Damn, got Sega. Dude. You know, Pokemon's got to be up in there. The, the, they're they're doing Pokemon. They're doing uh, NFL football coming up. It's all and it's all licensed. Like the NBA Top Shot is licensed through the NBA. Yeah, I mean, it's legit. Well, Sega just announced they're going to start doing uh, NFTs, like with their video game franchises, like Sonic the Hedgehog and stuff. That's nuts, man. And that's supposed to start like later this year, I think, which is probably going to be insane. Like, it's so weird to me. Like, it's cool that you made a lot of money. Yeah. Like, that's great. But that's a huge return on investment. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's probably not typical, but I, still, I, I mean, don't, it's cool. I don't understand people's fascination with, like, owning digital stuff that's digital only. Right. Like, I get, like, digital like, media. Like, crypto, you can use you can like use to actually buy stuff. physical stuff. You know, you can use Bitcoin to buy a physical thing if you had to. You know, but NFTs are like, I'm, I'm with you. Like, I don't, it's, I'm still trying to figure out it. Like, what is the point of it and how well, it, it works? It's, well, it even branched out into other stuff. Like it, with a trading card, like I, I collected trading cards when I was a kid. I played Pokemon and yeah, I collected Marvel cards, football cards and everything. And part of the fun was having your big binder with all your card slots and being look at all this cool stuff I got and having your hands on it. But what are you going to do now? Like, just, hey, look at this card I've got and hold your phone up. To yeah, but I mean. Yeah, I, I could give a shit less about the cards. I'm at this point, just well, make I know. I mean, you're, you're going to play the party, but, <laughs> Yeah, I mean. But what I mean is, like. But, like, collectors, like, with the painter and stuff, I mean, carry around a big iPad, like, look at this. Isn't it beautiful? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. It'd be different, like, if you were buying the, like, the rights to that art, and then you could. Like if you were using digital, it or like if you were using digital currency to pay for something physical, that would be a little bit different. But this is literally you're just buying well, air. You know, it's cool. I mean, it's, but it's also I mean, like, like right? in, in your case with the Beeple guy you were talking about. Like if you bought a piece of his art for a million dollars or something, if you then had the rights to mass produce whatever that art is, or sell it, or license it, or do something to profit off of it then I would like understand it more. Well, that's what a lot of people do. Actually, a lot of people would like resell, like buy his original art and then like resell it and say, Hey, I've got one out of, this is one out of 10. They only paid a thousand dollars for it. Right. But they may sell it for 10,000. You know, he makes all the money up front because he just sells all of it to, to the first buyers. And yeah, he probably could make more money if he sold it to like individual people, but he's like putting a run together and he's like, here, I'm selling the, these thousand pieces of art for an hour get on it you know so he just gets yeah. in and gets out you know he made 60 million that's, that's nuts crazy yeah it's crazy because it's like digital movies like it's really convenient to be able to watch a movie on my phone yeah like but if google play ever goes away and yeah that's a joke because google probably will never die but mm-hmm. when those platforms go away so does your content we, we love you yeah. google or if you're listening as we post to youtube yes yes and one of us crawler. one of us Web, 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 web caller was my jam, dude. Yeah. Web caller was, was awesome. It, and don't but, mess up and, and put the L and W switching because <laughs> I went to like some porn site. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, like you're you're an Xbox gamer, right? Yeah. So you probably have digital games, right? Most yeah. of your games are digital, well, right? I, I haven't bought a disc da- game, and I can't tell you how long. What happens? Let's say ten years from now, the current Xbox is dead, like, and they they shut their store down. Like, you don't have access to any of the stuff you bought anymore. Yeah. Well, in ten years, I'd hope there would be something new. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I mean, a lot of people I like to revisit that yeah, stuff, though. Uh, like my, you know, old Nintendo games. Like, how many people go back and play those old cartridges? Like, if yeah. that was all a digital I, storefront back um, in the eighties, it wouldn't. I have be the same. Anymore. I have the same feeling about that, but I'm kind of on the fence. Like, you know, 
I used to I used to love like having my like CD binder full of games that I would just flip through and be like, here, let's play this. But then other times I was like, oh, you mean I can just like hit a button and play the game immediately without having to even put the disc in? Like, yeah. what a world, yeah. you know? So it's kind of like and see the only reason the reason I've switched to pure digital is because me and my buddy Jake we we file share like, right. through Xbox because yeah, you do, do the home, the home Xbox right. And they're set up like that. And I think it's to get people to do like that. Like incentivize it, yeah. Because they know people do that. Yeah, oh, I'll yeah. take I'll take the risk with Xbox's servers not shutting down versus me like losing a game or scratching it or or whatever, you know. Right. Because yeah. that was another big thing, especially with disc. Is oh, scratching. my God, it's I mean, horrible. That was the worst. So here's the other interesting tidbit with that too, though, is there's also been platforms where, and this has happened recently, I saw it pop up. Uh, I can't remember what service it was. It might have been Apple, but someone's account was suspended. And as a result, they lost access to like thousands of dollars worth of movies and music and everything. And Apple's argument was you don't actually own any of that. I remember seeing about that. Yeah. And so like you're not. That's an interesting it debate. Was Ron Perlman, wasn't it? And well, Ron Perlman also had that issue recently where they, they tried to force him into repurchasing stuff that he's owned since the first iPhone came yeah. out or iPod came out, I think he was saying. Yeah. But it, it's just an interesting concept of when you buy something digital, do you truly own it? Yeah. And kind of like with these NFTs, like I really don't get that because I could take a screenshot of it. And now I have a copy of it. Like It's not legitimate, well, I, but I think as far it... as from a collector perspective goes, I've got it. Right. Yeah, I think it's one of those things that like I, I they you should watch that video. I'll I'll send you that link because they really kind of go into it. But like once the token is minted, because you don't mine tokens, you mint them. You have to like pay a certain amount of money to mint the token, and then this centralized governing body basically says, okay, this is the code, you own it, and no one else can use it, and it's sort of like a one-time use thing. So there are ways to validate it on the blockchain. So it, it's. Yeah, I see what you're saying, though. It's it seems like it'd be way too easy to but to exploit. You know, if I'm right, because like if I'm a basketball card collector, like in the example of the basketball stuff, I don't care if it's legitimate necessarily. Like, look at my screenshot collection of all my cards like that. I don't yeah, but but that's own. that's you, though. That. That's you, though. Most most collectors want to be able to prove that they that this, this is the one of a kind that they own it, you know. But I mean, I, I, I agree with you, though. It is kind of I guess see, it's like owning an official movie prop or something like right. you want it to be authenticated. Right. If you're into that thing. So I don't know. I I don't completely get it, but not, not that he gets. I really don't either. It, um, but... I think it's one of those things that like it's just sort of the natural progression from, you know, PayPal in the 90s and then people were like you can just buy stuff with a digital account what is this and then crypto and now nfts i think it's just like the natural progression and you know 20 years from now like it'll be to something totally different that like doesn't even make sense like you know how video games can sell you know armor kits online and like weapons and stuff for real money just boggles my, my mind as and i say that as someone who plays star citizen a game that shell sells starships I get it. It's it's like God. it's it's you know it's 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 crazy, and we probably don't even want to talk about how much money you've spent on that game. Uh, no, we will not be talking about that. So uh, I'm just kidding. Well, see, um, let's, for let's uh, go for, back to where you said like like with the video games and stuff. Mm -hmm. I guess I compare it to like how whenever debit cards first came out. Yeah, you know, yeah. like it's just, a new, it's just a new way. Or you know? up and down oh. that he would never. I want cash in my wallet. There's there's no way I'm getting one of them stupid cards. Yep. How do you know how much money is going to be? You know, like, because you're so, it's something new. You're so used to yeah. everything. Ten, it's ten always years from now, hand to hand. Exchange. NFTs will just be like well, the thing, you know. In, in that same vein, though, like Sony was about to shut down the PlayStation 3 store. Like PlayStation 3 is two generations behind now. Yeah. They still have servers online somewhere that they're paying for to maintain that store. And people were so adamantly pissed about it that Sony changed their mind about it last week. Hmm. Because, like, if you had a PlayStation 3, you weren't going to be able to go download any of your digital games anymore. The, right. Like, the store wouldn't exist anymore. Yeah, that's... And, yeah, like, so Sony made the right decision for what their fans want, but 
at some point they're going to do that cost analysis again and be like is it really worth us paying to keep these servers online for the angry video game nerds yeah first world problems man <laughs> like i That's said like, what, what yeah, world? steam i yeah. yeah i know i'm i like i'm a pc game player like if steam was like yeah we're shutting down i'm screwed I, I own hundreds yeah. of Steam games and if I lost yeah. those, I'm sure I remember remember like I don't know, like two years ago when like it was it was the it was either winter sale or summer sale. And I was like, hey man, I, I want let's let's start let's start trading some games or like let's start playing some games together. And I shared my library with you and I was like, man, I got tons of stuff. And you looked at it and you were like, Yeah, this is this is impressive. And then you showed me yours and I was like, motherfucker, like dude, it was like I scrolled for days going through his library, it was like dude. This it was crazy. This. Yeah, but it, we're talking about the the bar, right? And it was it yeah. was uh, yeah, the bar. It was interesting. That's what, yeah, that's what they call it. Well, yeah. Um you had to pay no, money I think, for yours. I think at, yeah, and let me how many games do I have in Steam? Let's look real quick. I've slowed down on purchasing because I was really bad at one point with if it was on sale, I bought it. Like so it, it didn't matter if I was wanting to play it or I might want to play it. So while you're looking uh, that up, while we're on the topics of video games, um, what is and this could be any this could be any system, this could be any console, arcade, handheld, anything. What is your you guys' favorite video game of all time? Does it matter if it's like arcade, console, no, any, PC, a, whatever? A, any video game. I own, what is that? 465 plus 18 plus 107 plus two. So I've got like 600 games. Yeah, it's it's stupid. I've probably played 30 of them. Yeah, that's that's the funny part. I'm an idiot. Video game. So I think it really define it like depends on how you define favorite. Like if we talk about like the game that I could go back to and play an endless amount of times, that's yeah, going it's your to it's your choice. Like, it's kind of like it's kind of like uh, Empire Strikes Back is the in my opinion is the best Star Wars movie, but my favorite Star Wars movie is Return of the Jedi. You know, so so make of that what you will. So your favorite is your favorite, and right. I'm just curious to know what that is. Like if there was only one video game you could. Ever yeah, for the rest of your life. you're in a desert island yeah. and you have power somehow <laughs> and you got one video game that you can play the rest of your life. A, a game I've never gotten tired of that I could sit down and play at any point in time is probably like Super Mario Brothers 3. It's an ageless game. It's a good one. I, can sit, yeah. I couldn't tell you how many times I've played it. It never gets boring. And I'm I like I know every level. I know all the secrets. It, but you I could, could, you could sit there and play, play it blindfolded all day. Yeah. Well, Jeff is deep in thought. Um, so yeah. for for me, it's for me, it's uh, Ocarina of Time. And I know it's Ocarina and I'm not going to say Ocarina That's because a good one. because Ocarina is lame. It's always going to be Ocarina for me. Um, I recently introduced Cameron I'd to say it. Ocarina too. Uh, yeah, I recently introduced Cameron to it about six months ago. And we, you know, he'd come home from school and we would like just play through it. You know, we'd play a we do a dungeon one day or, you know, just go get some extra hearts or whatever. And that game, you, you mentioned it with, with Mario Brothers 3. That game is timeless. You can play it once a year for the rest of your life and it would never get old. You know, um, it's just like for me, like reading Lord of the Rings. I read Lord of the Rings once a year, um, never gets old. But this game just it came out when I was like a junior or senior in high school. And it was right around that time that the N64 was king, you know, PlayStation was a thing and, you know, but like all my friends played N64 and I just remember getting together after school, trying to beat that damn water temple, raising the water up and down and all that shit. And we never used any, you know, strategy guides or anything. And this is, I mean, yeah, the internet existed, but you couldn't just like go to Google and be like, yo, let me look up some uh, YouTube uh, walkthroughs for this, <laughs> you know? So like, yeah, I, you had to figure that out yourself, you know? I was in like sixth or seventh grade in middle school. And I, I do remember going to school and being like, guys, I found out how to get this thing called the big Goron sword. <laughs> yeah. You got to do all this crazy stuff. And like, yeah. and, and they're like, what do you, they're like, what do you to... mean you hand him the mushroom? How did you even know to do that? It's like, I don't know. I just push buttons. And then like this happened, you know, you had to try, it happened. I don't try know. certain combinations I, of stuff. I, I played legend of Zelda for 20 hours straight. And then I ended up doing yeah. this thing. I broke a sword and I fixed it. It is ridiculous. But I, that was my, actually my favorite thing about being a kid where the internet was still up and coming with 
being a gamer is you really video games were a lot more conversational because you'd be like, dude, I found this thing. This is what you got to do. And people would be like, oh my God, how did you figure like there was this like information trade as being a kid. And, and a lot of people would just make shit up, but you had no way to know they were wrong. Yeah. Either. Re- so you'd, yeah. you'd waste hours doing really dumb stuff that didn't make yeah, sense. Yeah. Talking, but... talking in the lunchroom with your video game buddies yeah. was, was the like video game forums, you know, like that was, that was Mario how you 64. Found stuff. Yeah, Mario 64 was a big one we talked a lot about at lunch, too. I remember That's a good one. in seventh grade whenever uh, the very first Resident Evil came out. Oh, yeah, that was a big one. Holy shit. And I remember <laughs> me and my buddy, Ryan Ruby, we went to... That's a stripper name. We <laughs> No, that's Ruby Ryan. <laughs> Ruby Rose. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, we went to Blockbuster, and he rented a PlayStation. PlayStation. 1. I remember that. You his could rent mom, the whole console. His, yeah. Yeah. His mom ran it. I didn't even know you could rent them because talk about rich son. His dad was like a neurosurgeon and lived in a mansion. He had yeah. those pianos that played by itself. I mean, wow. Like, <laughs> like my dad dropped me off at this kid's house and I was like, holy shit. Like it was a house that you see in the movies. I mean, just yeah. with the pillars out front. I mean, the driveway was like a mile long. Anyway, so I get to his house and his mom's like, uh, y'all want to go to Blockbuster? And Ron's like, yeah, let's go rent a, a PlayStation. I'm like, you're like, what? You could rent a PlayStation? <laughs> and it was like, you had to put like $100 down as a yep. deposit. Yep. Yeah. You, I remember yeah. my dad. I remember doing that. Super Nintendo. And so I, rented, we got, I rented one of those we virtual got the boys. Game, we got the game and stayed up all night. Scared to death. Scared to death of a video game. And now looking back, it's like, man, this game's, you know. It's, it holds its weight, you know, yeah. to some degree, but, like, we were terrified. I remember one year, like, when you say staying up all night, it reminds me of this. Whatever year it was, Twisted Metal 2 came out on PlayStation. I got it as a Christmas gift. And I played that game for so long that when I finally decided to go to bed, I remember, like, laying down in our bunk bed and staring at the ceiling. And every time I closed my eyes, I was just seeing cars explode. <laughs> Like, I couldn't sleep because literally I was seeing, like, exploding yeah. cars in my sleep. I actually hallucinated playing the first Mario game, too. I believe Like, my, my parents brought me to the hospital because I was like, look at the turtle coming out of the hole. Oh, my God. The, the, yeah. yeah. So, like, maybe, I, I, maybe you were the one eating mushrooms and not Mario. I might have been. I don't know. But I, I, like, it's in my medical records. Like, I was, like, hallucinating and stuff playing the, the first Mario game, seeing shit. It's crazy. Well, my favorite video game that I could probably play nonstop would probably be NCAA football 2007. I was about to say. Yeah. Yeah. That was the very first one on 360, right? First one. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good game. Uh, And, and it's just because, you know, you can create your own player. You can continually, you know, it just, I don't know. It's never ending. I'm not even a college football plan or college football, football fan and uh to be fair I remember playing that he's game. not a college football plan people okay <laughs> he's telling the truth I but i but I, I remember that game even as a non i used to love putting the, the players names that. in because i i used to, i know my by, all by heart i go to alabama and be like all right i'm like all right this is you know this is jp wilson this is glenn yeah, coffee you know wilson. yeah like i mean because like I, I just i just type them all in and i'd always like make funny names for the other teams like auburn's quarterback would always be like like douche bag and then like his his on his jersey would say like d bag you know and like it was, yeah. i was i always did stupid shit well, like see, that i always made my high school football team go for his office yeah I always create a team and then everybody that was on i did that team too senior year i i made everyone I did yeah, that too. Like I made name, I, number. I made Gulf Breeze like a new school because I went there too, oh, yeah. and uh, I had him in like a like a upper deck style bowls uh, stadium, oh, yeah. and and then like I remember it, towards the later games you would have like dynasty mode where you'd have to like go out and actually recruit players and you'd, you'd have to oh, like yeah. con- you'd have to convince them not to leave for the draft and stuff <laughs> like it was it was nuts man it was crazy. Yeah, it was it was definitely. Can was, I change? Can I change my answer? <laughs> I, I can't wait for them to come. I can't wait for them to come out with. With a new one, if they they're supposedly if they, supposedly look, working on it, man. We, why don't we alter your question a little bit and do some categories? So yeah, because like, that'd be my favorite sports game. Yeah, know, sure, hands down. Like yeah. 
my favorite racing game would probably be uh oh my god i just had a brain for it turismo forza no it's old school road rash road rash was fun yes that was probably my favorite need, racing game. need for speed underground right here i used to love that shit dude that was tied to uh my brother toby actually showed me that game for the first time you guys remember the old arcade game uh iron mics off-road or is it iron mics yeah yeah it's iron mics yeah. off-road yeah it had like, like two, three players two steering wheels. yeah yeah, yeah. I, i've got a lot of good memories playing that game at like a local bowling alley and i i still want one of those uh favorite sports game i would probably have to say like nba jam tournament edition or yeah. nba hang time or I hang, sit down hang time and was for was hours. so hang time was so cool on n64 but when it came out it was that whole style of play had sort of already like kind of gone away tournament yeah. tournament it, edition, tournament edition wasn't wasn't was so good and i i did love hang time because you could make your own player and stuff and like your stats yeah. what it was slowly like you know jump up as you won more you games and stuff the, the double jump you guys zombie and shit yeah so that's a good one and then maybe nfl blitz a, oh man so that my that, buddy randy I, used to just play that thing forever i know this is not a popular opinion but like i love midway games usually but like i could not get into nfl blitz man i don't know what it was like i sucked at that game and i'm usually like at least better than average at video games and i could like i hated that game i don't know why i just people would come over like jonathan and his friends would come over and they'd want to play that game for fucking hours i'm just sitting there like can we play Soul Calibur or something like I, I used to hate that game. I don't know what it was, man. I was just horrible at it. I did like it was in the arcade. You could actually t you could take your memory card from your N64 and it's and it put yep. it in the arcade yep. game. So you could like continue playing there. That was pretty cool. Um, I have the, the arcade one, game. What was the one football game that was set up just like Blitz? But like you could like get it when you got the silence, you could like take steroids and shit. I don't it know was, that uh, one. That's crazy. And if. Is it impact? Could have felt impact. It was something like that, but like Maybe. they got in deep shit. Like they, they had to no, that was. Making... I'm thinking of high impact football. That was like a Genesis. Yeah, uh, I cannot remember the name of it, but dude, it was it was nuts. Like it was set up just like NFL Blitz, but like it would like show broken bones. Like when you big hit like a player, you could like break their bones, and it was it was wild. That was like a Dreamcast game, wasn't it? I think so. I'm gonna have to look that up because I know what you're talking about now that you mentioned it. And I can't think of the name of yeah, it. Yeah, I don't know what it's called. But yeah, they got in big trouble by the NFL, and the NFL made them stop making the game. You know, Sid just got a four-player uh, NFL set or NFL high-impact arcade game. Did he? Yeah. Damn. It's like mint condition. That's awesome. You need to go play it sometime. But uh, what other good game categories are there? Fighting, Fighting games. <laughs> first person um, shooters mmos i mean come on dude i mean first person shooter would probably be modern warfare nah og Arthur halo old school the original halo man See, i didn't me. really get into the halo I didn't either. later ones. i loved it dude loved it like my brother Actually, even the guys I take, I take that back the best first person shooter of all time golden eye on n64 and i I will. I I'll, I'll go to my grave <laughs> defending that game, even though it looked yeah, horrible. Yeah. It looked I, horrible. Yeah, it was so fun. Dude, I remember because I had it on the sixty four, and you could have four players, yep. four controllers, the split screen. Like, shit. I would yeah. have. Yeah, I would have like six or seven of my buddies stay the night at my house like in high school, and we would stay and just up switch off until and stuff. Like yeah, four or five o'clock in the morning. Yeah, we playing the, the playing the game, and then we'd put in the cheat to make the big heads, and that way if <laughs> we, we played the, we always the single played, player, you could like snipe the bad guys from across the fucking map. We always played like way. license to kill, so it was like one shot. You hit them, they die, no matter where. Yeah, we we wouldn't do the stupid yeah. armor shit, and people would like get shotguns, and they would just turn corners and fire, hoping to hit somebody, you know, and it would work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we. We used to play uh, turbo mode, license to kill with uh, whatever mode it was that came with the, uh, was it the RCP-90, RPC-90, whatever yeah. the machine gun was. Um, that was fun. We'd always fight over who got to be odd job and uh, we, we never allowed, so we never allowed odd job because it was, it was such a, it was such a cheap way to play. You know, like the, the pro player would always choose he's, Jaws because he's, so he's bigger, you know? Playing with Jaws yeah. was hard because you get hit. Well, I had a game. Wait, what was it for sixty four Game Shark? I think I had a Game Shark, and it would, it would unlock 
other James Bond characters that were technically in the memory of the game, but they weren't released. Like you could play as the like Timothy Dalton James Bond, and you could play as other actors in the oh, multi- wow. in the multiplayer that you couldn't play normally. You just hit like you just put the code in from the Game Shark, and you could do it. That was pretty cool. That's uh... yeah. The other game we used to alternate on the the like N sixty four four player nights is uh, Gauntlet, the original Gauntlet on Legends four. I say original Gauntlet. The, yeah, the uh, Gauntlet Legends. Hey, are you a Patriots fan? No. Uh, why? Who they who they who they just draft? Mac Jones. That's a good place for him, actually. Well, didn't mean to cut you off. No, you're good. <laughs> I just knew you'd be happy. Got, Gauntlet Legends was the fun one. Uh, you guys in your draft. I know. Some nerds. nerds. Hey, you can be a nerd in a lot of things, man. You know, not just, you know, comic books yeah. and video games. I had that argument with somebody actually uh, a couple of years back. They were yeah, making they were making fun about sports ball stuff. Sports and I was ball. like, <laughs> dude, saying they, that I was saying like that they're being that like sports people can't be like fanboys. Yeah, right. it's like yeah. Being, being a a a sports fan is like one of the original forms of being Absolutely, a fan. yeah. Like well, that's it, where it comes from. It, <laughs> Fanatic yeah, is that's, like, what, that's where that's so, where the word comes from. Yeah, th- that's part of why we chose our name as fan out is you can literally fan out about anything that you like. And oh wait, I thought it was like a katana joke, like where she like takes her fans out. Damn it! I thought that's yeah, why it was Kobe, blue. Whatever you think. Speaking speaking of best fighting game is uh, probably MK two MK two or Ultimate, Ultimate Mortal, Mortal Kombat, Kombat 3. three. I like <laughs> MK two more, but yeah. Ultimate just has that like smooth K2 more. Ultimate has that smooth combo like, you know, interface where you can do the juggle combos and then knock them up into the next uh, you know, area. MK2, you got to, you had to create your own combos. And speaking of Katana, she was a bitch if you knew how to use her, dude. She could keep people in the corner with the fan and that energy thing yeah, she did. I, I loved that game, dude. Loved that game. Reptile. Did you ever play Super Smash Bros? I played last night. Yeah, I've never <laughs> I, played that game. Dude, so I have to change. I that. never that got into so it. I never, Jonathan and his brothers always wanted to play. Whenever I was over there hanging out, Eric and Jeremy, his brothers, always wanted to play. And I again, another game I sucked at, and I just didn't like it. But they would play for hours, dude. They play for hours. They still play that game. Yeah, I've got a cousin like he he. I don't. He think might it's... be world champion as far as I know. But yeah. <laughs> that's all he ever dude, played. My wife, she is amazing at that damn game. Yeah, like, I've never played it. Not one. Her time. and her friends are like competitive level players. That's crazy. Like I thought I was good, and then I played her, and I was not. But I think I think the game might not be structured enough for you, Colby, because I know you like. Yeah, I don't to yeah. figure out systems and stuff, and you that game play, is uh... very loosely put together. Did you ever play uh, Marvel Ultimate Alliance? Yeah, that was a fun one. <clears throat> it was it was original Xbox title that they ported to 360. So if you played it on 360, like it was still playable, but it it had the original like Xbox graphics. Um, but Cameron and I are about to start playing that now because he's really into like the Lego Marvel games, and and I wanted to start playing nice. some like and they're fun, but I wanted to start playing some like real. It's very similar Marvel games now. Yeah, is, actually, is, is that is that. Isn't that like the top view? Yeah, yeah it's, it's sort of um, sort of like back and top, almost and like, like a Diablo style game. Yeah, yeah. I've played. You played pick that. you pick like four people and you build your team, and they they all have their moves that they and can that was combine on the together. Sixty, right? Yeah, it's it's super fun. The super original fun. Great. Xbox and three sixty. Yeah, yeah, I've yeah. It's a great story. I, the third one, third one came out last year for for Switch. I forgot about that. I never played it. Yeah, it's it's the Infinity it's the Infinity Stone Saga. So you should check that out. Apparently, it's pretty cool. We have a Switch, but it is definitely my wife's. So it's like almost never actually here. <laughs> and I'm really weird about the Switch too. I the controls are so, too small for me, so I can't play yeah, it I can't like do in it. mobile mode. So if I can if I can't hook it to the TV and play, I'm not going to play it. Thanks Nintendo. Also, yeah. a really dumb feature cuz we were, we were playing Super Smash Brothers last night with uh her cousin that was getting ready for surgery. So we were playing online with him. And even though we have four controllers at home, you cannot play a mixed match of local and online play for that game. If you play online, it could only be one player local, even though it's a four player. That's lame. 
Yeah. Just like, what were you thinking, Nintendo? Like, yeah, you, they always have like the craziest ideas, and I feel like they just never fully execute on them anymore. Like ever ever since the GameCube, they like the Wii, well, the Wii. You got to remember the Switch, though, a lot gimmicky. of a lot of their systems are designed for the younger audience, and as we've gotten older, we've sort of outgrown their their consoles. You know, um, that's true. They, I mean, never think about, about it. it they way. don't they don't have a lot of mature games on their systems. Like I can't even like think of any nintendo exclude like all the nintendo exclusive games are all young house of the you know, dead one and two are getting re-released that's a, on nintendo switches that's exclusive. a that's a sega game though you know what i mean that's developed by sega i mean like nintendo's right. games that they yeah. actually make that's you true. know yeah it is an exclusive though yeah okay but you're right like uh, nintendo's um their money is in age neutral entertainment yeah, like, it, like anybody, anybody can play can pick up it, one of their games you know, and have fun. My my mom and my dad used to play Wii bowling and they would suck so bad at it. And I'd do a I'd I'd bowl a perfect game and with my eyes closed and they're like, How do you do that? I'm like, guys, it's so easy. Just don't be horrible. And you just <laughs> you, do this. You, you flick your wrist at the end and it curves. It's easy. The Wii. I'm one of them lazy people because when we'd go to play somebody with the, the Wii, I would I figured out you could just sit on the couch. <laughs> Yeah, yep. yeah. Do the motion. And so I was like, I'm not standing up to do this. I remember playing Punch Out on the Wii. Like, uh, girls would always like, you know, really get into it. Like they're doing like Zumba or something. And I'd just be like, like I'd barely be punching it because you don't, you don't have to do it like hard. You know, it's not supposed to be exercise. It's supposed to be fun. Yeah, all you got to do is move the controller. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. God, Nintendo. They do make some bad decisions, though. Like the Wii U, you had that controller with a screen in it. Oh, God, what a failure and that was. even if the game you were playing, even if the game you were playing didn't require that controller, it still had to be charged and on to play the game. Yeah, yeah it was a weird, Why? weird thing. Plus, it had that, like, supplemental screen. Like, if you played the Mario game, like... People who weren't actually like playing the controller at that time could like give you buffs like on their other little screen. It was like, what the hell is that? It was so odd. Yeah. Or 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 I I, I don't remember what game it was, but you you would pause it to look at the map, and instead of just seeing the map on the TV, you had to look down at your hand. No. Like <laughs> I have to pause it to show it on the screen. Yeah, that's a dumb decision. That's design. It's, it's one of those things where like Nintendo makes a lot of gimmicks that mm -hmm. like yeah they just don't fully think through and execute on like the switch is one of the better examples of execution for sure it's not my cup of tea but well they're certainly designed to fail Sorry, those Nintendo. things those things have more charger problems than anything oh, i've ever yeah. seen dude it's crazy you can buy broken switches on ebay for like 20 bucks and repair them so in interesting trivia for you guys did you know that Nintendo and Sega have built a game console together. Like when? Like now? They're building it now, or they, it's, it's a long they, time ago? No, like it, it uh, close to ten years ago. Hmm. Have you ever heard of the Sega Triforce? That sounds like some uh, something in Japan or something, right? Yeah. So if memories, it, it's an arcade-based console that's built off of a prototype Xbox that Sega, Microsoft, and Nintendo wow. collaborated on Interesting. to make arcade games with. Yeah. Can't say I've uh, that's had like the pleasure the, uh, of playing that I think one. It's, if you've ever heard of, uh, I think it's the Sega, Sega Naomi. That yeah, that's, that's their version, of, that's their version of, of JAMA, basically. Yeah, it's it's a JAMA-based console, but it's built off of a prototype Xbox that has extra RAM. Interesting, and it uses a different disc. It uses a GD ROM. Oh yeah, well, which uh, is a game disc ROM. Uh, I was gonna say game disc used that. It was like a one gigabyte optical disc, which at the time was ridiculous. Yeah. So I just cool. I thought that was interesting. I found out about that a couple weeks ago, and I was like, "Wow, that's something that most people probably wouldn't know." But the big three have actually collaborated on a gaming platform. Yeah, no wonder it failed, right? <laughs> it's like there were no. Yeah, Probably. I was going to say, so Sega actually is uh, closing down their um, their arcade division and selling it off. Interesting. So it's like, a, so it's like, a, another, another so it's like a one-of-a-kind item? Buys. Probably. Yeah. 
yeah, pretty soon we'll be uh, connecting to Microsoft instead of Discord to do our our, our videos yeah. here. We'll see how that goes. Well, well suppose that's ridiculous. Supposedly, yeah. uh, and everything up. Discord just denied that apparently. I think so too. Well, speaking of like Microsoft, is just I mean, they don't ever pull any punches. Do you? I I, I think it was the original. I think it was the 360 where like they uh, contracted some third party company to develop the rumble feature for the controller. Right. Sony in the PS3 used the same company to develop the rumble feature in their controller. Microsoft found out about it, bought the company out and then sued Sony for using their stuff. So if you remember like the very first like launch, titles for for ps3 like were delayed because they had to redo the rumble feature and it was just like that's such a microsoft thing to do man like yeah, that's yeah. awesome you know cool talk, talk, talk about it talk about flexing like that was awesome dude yeah. that's kind of what they did with obsidian yeah. i mean they oh you ps ps players really like you know obsidian games okay we'll take care of that <laughs> yeah, yeah. Xbox exclusive yep and what's funny is most of those games actually do play better on the PlayStation, yeah. like out of the two. All right, shut your mouth. <laughs> We're going to disconnect right now. I'm I'm not a, I'm not saying I'm a Sony fanboy. Like I own a PlayStation Four, but that's only because Final Fantasy VII Remake was an exclusive for it. So I I found a used one. I didn't even give Sony my money directly. <laughs> and then bought right, that game, fine. played it, and it's collecting dust now. I get the itch to play that game again sometimes because it. The original Final Fantasy VII, I probably play every so, couple of years. I'll play through it again. Fun fact, speaking of trivia, oh, this isn't really trivia, but I have not played a single second of any Final Fantasy games ever. If you can believe that. I played... I feel bad. I, I played last year was the first time I ever played one, and it was maybe for an hour. Yeah, I played every RPG yeah. known to man except for Final Fantasy. I don't know why. I just never... I, I never really had the systems. Like, I was always a Nintendo person and an Xbox person, and they were... I mean, I think they were there, but like I, by the time they were released on those, I was always, I was playing other games and stuff. I never got into them. They're definitely, um, while they're a very popular RPG series, they're still pretty niche in their game. Yeah, I, style, did, especially I didn't the like their art, games. their art style either, you know, personally. Um, it's just... Well, I love the guy that does their concept art. They've been using the same uh, concept artist since before the first game, and he does some amazing stuff. And the same composer did most of the games, too, um, which I actually went to a concert, like a symphony concert, and he was like two rows in front of me and my wife. And oh, that's cool. That's fanning cool. out the whole time. But uh, <laughs> I, get I don't it. know if it... Fan yeah, out. The, I've played and beaten most of the Final Fantasy games. There's a couple I skipped, but... Some of them definitely stand out more than others, um, story wise. And, and really, that's the thing for me. It's like playing a book, like you're reading, yeah. The, the gameplay isn't the most exciting, it, it can be exciting if you're into the turn based games, but really, you're, you're reading through a story and interacting with it a bit. So, I don't did know. you ever, it, if did you, you ever play did that? give one a shot, I'd make recommendations for you. Yeah. Did you ever play that Lord of the Rings game? It was, it was on Xbox called the third age and it was, it was, it was all turn-based, but it was about, so it took place the exact same time. I that, have it. Yeah. It's really cool. It, it takes place the exact same time that fellowship of the ring takes place. But basically this other group of people is sort of like, kind of like the backup fellowship and they're helping them. They're like clearing some stuff for them to make way for the real, fe real fellowship. They're kind of on the sidelines. It was actually really cool. Like you go into Moria and you fight the Balrog and stuff, and it's totally turn based. And that was my first true turn based game. You know, like you, you played Night, you played Kotor on Xbox, right? Knights of the Old Republic. Yeah. So that was that, that was what they call real time turn based, where like you choose an action and it'll just keep doing that until you choose something else, right? But i right. never I'd never played a true like go stop go stop turn based game, and I got into it, and it was it was cool. I probably would enjoy Final Fantasy. I just never really played it. Yeah, if you ever decided to venture into it, there's definitely a couple that I would recommend over the others that, like, I have revisited many times um, that are just really good stories. Uh, Final Fantasy VI is probably the best storyline in all the games. It's just really, really good uh, back on Super Nintendo. It originally released as Final Fantasy III in the U.S., but it was Final Fantasy VI. In yeah, the I remember hearing about that, yeah. And they they did like a renumbering thing once uh, the PlayStation came out to 
kind of realign things so that seven could launch uh, more universally. But seven's also really good. But a lot of people have this misconception that seven remake is actually a remake, and it is not. It is a sequel. I know that the the title is confusing, but kind of like what we were talking about earlier. Um, where like middle school, high school, when we were growing up, you didn't really have internet stuff. Like you just had rumors from friends that you'd play through. Well, like there's Ermac. a big event. That, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like there's most people know by now, like in Final Fantasy seven, there's a big event in the game and it is like tear jerking. It will, it makes you sad if you're invested in the story and, you know, 13 year old me and all of my friends were trying to find ways to make that not happen in the game. And Final Fantasy VII Remake is, like, so macro that it actually takes that into account. Oh, wow, it's that's interesting. Re- so it's as if the wishes of the players have actually altered the timeline of the original game. So the game has very, like, you're replaying the same time period, but there's slight alterations that are fucked up in the timeline that are in line with what the fan base wanted. So it's like it's a really clever way of doing it, and it doesn't really. It's like the Snyder cut. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It and um, so I keep telling people, and the internet's very split over it because, of course, square, you mean, you square, mean the internet can't agree on something. <laughs> yeah, water, and it's, water still it's, wet. Yeah, <laughs> and um, but yeah, so like I just I keep telling people if you ever think about playing Final Fantasy VII remake, you do. Like, you could probably play it and get away with it without playing the original, but it will mean a lot more to yeah, you, you need if that, you actually that play connection the original. to it. Yeah. Cool. Maybe we'll do that. Maybe so, we'll do a live A lot of people will argue that with me, but... What's y'all's favorite scary game? Scary game? S- scary game? Real life? I'm playing it right now. It sucks. I don't recommend it. I the graphics don't... are good. <laughs> yeah, they're a little too good. I, um... <laughs> I, uh, um... 1080 i don't know man i i'm such a baby when it comes to that stuff like i i don't really like the whole jump scare thing the only game the only scary game that i played that i really liked there's two of them resident evil 2 on n64 because that was the only one that i could play it's a, mir- um, it's and a then, miracle that game even uh, worked. i know it was so buggy because the the memory issues and stuff um i loved that game um alien isolation um that game almost ruined me. <laughs> like that game is so terrifying. If you play it in the dark, play with headphones. Um, but it's I, I don't know. I, I don't like being scared. That's just me. I'm just a baby, I guess. Man, I don't know. I have like I have a problem with like committing to scary games. I'll get Same. myself all amped yeah. up about playing it. I'll sit down to play it. I'm like, I Yeah, that's how I was. I I'd, I'd be 2 minutes in alien so isolation and be like, nah. Pussies. Yeah, that's basically what sure. I mean, I, I didn't want to say it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you said it. That's fine. Uh, uh my favorite scary game that I played the shit out of because I love getting scared. Fatal Frame. That's a good one. That Never game finished it. Was fucking scary. I don't know that one. You have a weapon, you walk your little Chinese girl, and you walk around with a camera and take pictures. And the only way to see the ghost is to take a picture. Oh, hell no. No. You can Um, see the ghost. Nope, nope. And there's one (laughs) point where you walk down into this basement. This is before before, like the ring and all all that shit. Oh, great. Now I'm not going to sleep tonight. That 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 movie ruined me for like two years, dude. I could not sleep for like two years straight. Dude, I have a story. Fuck, Jeff. Now I'm I'm not going to sleep tonight. You walk down this basement, and there's a a well just in the the middle of the room. And you take a picture, and this chick crawls out of the well. Look at his ass. And then starts crawling on all four legs coming towards you. This shit was scary, dude. It was scary. Dude, I went to a haunted house. And, like, I had to crawl through this air vent. There's chainsaws going off in the background. Yeah, no, man, it's scary I, as hell. I don't... I, I am a fight or flight type of guy. Like, I have accidentally punched, like, people in the face at haunted houses. Like, nice. I do not go to them because I'm afraid I will hurt somebody. I've literally, like, I uh, Jason Voorhees, dude, jumped out of a closet or something. I punched him in the face and left. I'm um, sorry if you're out there. But I... You have to crawl through this air vent in this one I went to downtown, and 
when you get out, you're in this like living room type environment with the TV. The TV turns on static, and I swear to you, this girl dressed like the chick from the ring burst through the paper covering the TV and like did the death crawl thing. And I was just, ah, uh -uh. <laughs> I'm out. We went to the movie theater. So this has been the Fan Out Podcast, boyfriend. episode one, and uh, uh, unrelated. I'm gonna go. Um, I'm just gonna go. <laughs> did, did Bob? I went to see the ring at at the movies. It was at the Silver Screen. And it was Silver Screen. me, uh, my two younger brothers, my mom, and her boyfriend at the time. What movie? The Ring. Oh God. And you asked. And I we, guess <laughs> we're sitting there, and you know the part where she like falls into the well. Yeah. As soon as she falls in the well, my mom's boyfriend at the time, freaking hilarious guy. His name is Nate. Flip backwards. He, no, he yells, call me later. Oh, my God, <laughs> dude. <laughs> dude, everyone, because it's supposed to be like a traumatic, scary moment, dude. Everybody in the theater. That's funny. That's life. funny. <laughs> Did he leave? <laughs> Got up and walked out. Yeah, he came back, but it was just perfect timing. That's I mean, great. So That's great. Fun. Call me later. That's yeah, that, mo that movie ruined uh, me, dude. Ugh, I hate that fucking but movie. But I grew, I, I grew up with, I've got three older brothers that all love scary movies. I mean, like, obsessive. We love scary movies, so I grew up watching since I was like, yeah. "You need to tell the story." Nope, he doesn't. No stories. About you guys looking for ghosts. No stories. You know what? About you guys looking for ghosts. Looking for ghosts. Which one? With the the cassette recorder. Oh my goodness. Okay, so me and my cousin, you gotta hear this. I guess this, I'm not. I guess crisis. I'm not sleeping tonight anyway. So go ahead. We're down the rabbit hole now. <laughs> go ahead. Me and my cousin lived over in Pensacola. We had a lived in a duplex. So. This duplex, like as soon as you open the front door, you got the kitchen to the left, straight ahead, a little bit to the left is the living room. And there's a bathroom underneath the stairs that goes up right as you walk in. You open the door, what you see is the stairway, the kitchen, the living room, and then there's a door that goes into the bathroom, a little half bath underneath the stairs. And the two bedrooms were up top. This isn't even the story I'm talking about. No, it's not, but I'm going to get to that. Okay. So we I was like, this is terrifying said, so far. I'm terrified. We've, we've always said that this, this place is haunted. You know, we hear shit. We'll be the only ones there. Uh, so I'll tell you the scary thing. Where was it? What What's happened to, off of Kipling over off of Olive Road. Okay, yeah. I know where that is. So he, he's my cousin. it on his map. Never go yeah, there. Yeah, my cousin. Oh, I, used to, I used to live right near there. Northwoods. His wife. Him and his wife get married, and they go to Hawaii for their, uh, what is it, honeymoon. honeymoon? Well, there was a chick that lived in the joining complex, you know, the same complex we did, just right next door to us. Well, it, the two complexes are set up the exact same, except they're just opposite, you know, so they both have the stairs next to each other. So sometimes when she's walking upstairs, you can hear it. Well, I'm... In the little half bath on the stairs, and I'm shaving, and I've got shaving cream all over my face, and I've shaved half of my face, and I hear do 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 do, like somebody run up the stairs. Like that's weird. And I'm thinking, you know, maybe it's her, but it was like really loud, like right above me. So all of a sudden, I hear feet run down the stairs, and so I stick my head out the out the door and looking at the stairs, waiting to see if somebody's coming down my damn steps. So nobody comes down the steps. I'm like, oh, it must be the neighbor. So I go to the front door, open the door. She's not there. Her car's gone. And like she was single, lived there by herself. If she's there, her car's there. If it's not there, she's not there. So I'm like, okay, that's fucking weird. So I go back in the bathroom and I'm thinking maybe she's got somebody at her house. I don't know. So I start shaving. All of a sudden I hear boom, boom, boom. Like, Right above me, like somebody stomping their feet on the steps above me. I left, got in my car, and went to my mom's house. Shaving cream and everything. My face shaving with shaving cream on the other side. So anyway, I it, it was it was scary. But the, the story, so, Brian. So you never you about, never found out like what it was. No, no. I I the and next you day went I back, went back. You went back and stayed there again. Yeah, I lived wow. there. <laughs> I know. I mean, obviously, but I went wow. back the next day and and ran into the check. I cannot remember her name and asked her if she was home and she wasn't there. She's like, no, I wasn't home all day yesterday. I had to do something with my parents or some shit. And you're sure it wasn't, so she wasn't like there. somebody in your above your stairs and just messing with you, right? Like, it was me and my cousin and his wife lived there. Right, but I mean, they were in Hawaii. Hawaii. Oh, that's right. They were gone. That's right. 
Wow. Yeah. Yeah. No one lived yeah. above them. Does she have dogs? And the chick next door lived there by herself. No. Couldn't have pets there. Well. So. And another, I'll tell you this quick little thing too. Me and my, there was a little attic access in the bedroom that you could go up in for the attic and shit. Well, we get this bright idea. Let's go up there and look for treasure because, like, I'm obsessed with finding treasures. You know, like somebody's put stash money somewhere. <laughs> yeah, Fine. fucking pirate. So we go up there, and there's a firewall with people that don't know. You know, building they build when when you have adjoining apartments and stuff they build a firewall in case one unit catches fire it's it's makes it hard for the other building to catch fire and basically it's just you know plywood that that cuts the two units off well somebody had taken a hammer and looked like beat a hole the size of a person so they could get back and forth between the apartments it's probably, the, it was cousin, probably the homeless guy that was living above there that was on the stairs when she was gone <laughs> so we get the flashlight and every one of the chicks vents, like the ductwork that goes into the vents for the air conditioner, the insulation had been raped away from all the vents. Some dude was going up. So we went and crazy. told her and she said, yeah, my ex-boyfriend used to live in y'all's building. And when we split up, he was climbing up through the, the attic and peeping on me like a peeping top. I was like, oh, that's Jesus Christ. Creepy. That was probably him, dude. Yeah. So, no, well, there was creepy. nobody up there at the time. It was so me and, my, me and my cousin, we go and watch the movie White Noise. Oh, Jesus. Okay. And, you know, you turn Screw the TV on movie. and listen to static and, you know, communicate with the dead. So we get this little cassette tape, little recorder, and we go around the house after we watch the movie and we're like, we're going to find ghosts. We know that some bitch is haunted. So we go upstairs and turn the TV on. Old tube TV. Old tube TV. So he turns it on and puts the volume up. And there's no, there's no volume. And we're like, what the hell? So he's got it cranked all the way up. And it's, there's no volume. No static noise. So <laughs> he says, well, the ghost of this room, please make a pre your presence known. And all of a sudden the TV goes, pop, pop. We ran, you can hear us go screaming. I've heard the tape. Run down the steps, jump over the couch in less than one second. Oh my God, dude. I would have killed myself. I would have died. Freaked, I died. freaked us out. Come to find out the TV has a delay. Like, whenever you turn it on, if the volume's up too high, it mutes it. To let you know, hey, some bitch, this is about to blow the speakers. I love how, I love how you're like, oh, by the way, it wasn't really a ghost. The TV was broken. <laughs> like, oh, thanks. <laughs> but it was super scary, super, super Yeah, funny. that's, if that's, you ever that's hear crazy. The tape, it, we need to, like, digitize that. Yeah, my thing. cousin's got it. It's freaking awesome. No, I, I plan on sleeping for the next two years. I'm, I'm good. You guys can listen to it all you want. <laughs> it's funny. I like being scared. Yeah. I think the best, I don't know. My favorite scary game that I want to finish is Alien Isolation, but I'm a chicken shit. Yeah, I that, got game, that, game that, game's, that game's hard to play. So it's terrifying, and you can like hide in lockers and stuff. So basically my strategy for that game is I turn it on, I play until I find a locker, I hide, and then I'm like, yeah, I'm good. The I beat it. This this is enough for today. Yeah, yeah mine is turn off. It's about that's about the same as mine, except I just see ten seconds of it and then just turn it off. I don't even go. I don't even find the locker. It's 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 terrifying, dude. The sounds and I stuff. Just, I'm not even. I mean, yeah, I get the premise of it, and and I'm sure it is scary, but I don't know. When I get sit down to play a video game, like I want to be doing something. You know, well, like, you I do. don't want to be able to. I want to be able to walk somewhere and not worry about. Well, if I walk over here, I'm going to die. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, like, so funny story when um. My old roommates still lived here, AJ and Larry. AJ streams that game, doesn't he? Yeah, he, he's played through the whole thing like a champ. Um, he's gotten most of the achievements on it like a champ, too. He bought a heart rate monitor because it was increasing his heart rate so much that like he actually, in his Twitch stream, has his heart rate like That's posted cool. in the corner so you can actually see how scared he's getting. It's pretty legit. But one of the features in that game is if you have a microphone hooked up to your PC or Xbox or whatever you're playing on, the game can hear you breathing, it can hear you reacting, it hears background noise, and it basically acts as the ears of the Xenomorph. Oh, wow. 
That's fucking ridiculous, dude. Like, yeah. Jesus. So, like, if you're pa- if you're panicking, hiding in a locker, and you're breathing like heavy, the xenomorph will literally walk by and be like, "There's a bitch in there." Well, I could never play and pull you out. Kids on their show. Well, you can disable the feature. Oh, okay. And AJ, <laughs> unplug did. <your> mic. <laughs> yeah, so I'm like hiding, and all of a sudden the the fucking alien here. Dad, daddy, dad. Here's the thing. AJ was trying to become a Twitch streamer at the time, so he's using his mic to stream, so he had the option turned off. Well, he went to work one day, and me and Larry logged into his stuff and turned the setting back on. So he has a stream where he's like, he's sneaking by the alien, he's real quiet because he's scared, and he's like hiding under this little table, and you see the xenomorph kind of walking away, and AJ's like, and it just... (laughs) <laughs> flips the table over and kills him and this it happens like three or four times in this stream where he, he's like he finally like he survived the aliens leaving he's like i fucking made it and the xenomorph just turn around and run at him and destroy him and he finally figured it out but he his reaction was just priceless because he immediately when he when he realized the option was on he went to the menu and saw it and he's like you motherfuckers that's awesome that's great <laughs> it's so funny Sorry, AJ. It was good entertainment. But that that's a scary game that I'd love to finish that I'm just not brave enough to make it through. Which is funny because I could walk through an abandoned house no problem in real life, but well, there, let's do it. there's something about the digital environment that just freaks me out. Like, I, I feel less in control, I guess, yeah. of myself. Like, you're more See, I'm, t- I'm totally the opposite, dude. Do. I'm totally the opposite. Like, well, you won't play scary games either. Well, you what know I'm saying, what like, to play? when I do though, like, if I if if I imagine myself being in that on that ship, actually trying to fucking hide from that alien, I'd much rather be in the video game, you know, than than there, actually be there. When you get your PC set up and working again, we need to play a game together and record it called Phasmophobia. Phasmophobia. Have you heard of this, Colby? No. <sighs> it is a four-player ghost hunting game. Pass. Where you go you go to a haunted house and you Pass. basically pick out your equipment. You got your flashlight, your audio recorder, your EMF detector. You can only carry two items at a time. You've got walkie-talkies. And your goal is to identify what type of ghost is in the building. So, like, is it a banshee? Is it a poltergeist? Is it, you know, any, any number of, like, different style ghosts? And to beat the level you have to basically interrogate it with all these different items to see what it reacts to, to guess what it is. And if you guess right, you get paid to do like for completing that job and you can enhance your inventory to buy better equipment stuff. If you guess it wrong, you're out all of the money you spent on it. And it can kill you in the game. And it can kill you. Yes. But that is a creepy ass game. Especially you get some of these streamers that are real animated. Yeah. I it, it's rough. You'll you'll be standing there, and I, and you can it similar to Alien. It can hear what you're saying, and it'll respond to voice commands. So it tells you the name of the spirit when you go in. So like if the don't the I'm ghost just look, name I'm is just looking Janet, to make sure I'm alone. You yeah, continue. Uh, Bob just Bob just moved, but like it'll tell you going in like this. This spirit's name is Janet. Uh, she enjoyed, you know, cooking for her family or whatever, and. Uh, blah 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 tells you a little about about them but they'll respond to their name and stuff so i'll play with my wife and her friends and they'll get pissed because i'll be walking through the house with the the uh emf thing being like janet make me some goddamn waffles and like cussing out the ghosts and it it will piss them off when you talk to them like that because of the voice recognition you'll see it spike to 10 and you'll hear and someone will die and then i leave no karen you cannot speak to the manager and then she just shows up and kills you yeah no thanks i'm good yeah but it's crazy, like, because it'll have pictures flying around the room. And it's a wild game. It's cheap too on Steam. It's I, I think it's like my computer's not bucks my computer's not good enough to play it. So sorry, I'm out. What can you do? Dude, Bob just moved again. <laughs> He's fine. It falls over. Speaking of Harvey what monitors, you even do? Uh, if he fell, oh, he falls over all the time because he's. It's like a half mannequin, like haunted. Well, that yeah. So. Only the torso is an actual like is actually there. The legs are just pipes, so he falls over all the time. One time he actually like hit me too. It like brushed against me, and it wasn't scary at all. So, (laughs) (laughs) 
Oh, man. Well, I don't know what kind of time we're at. We're, what time are One, we at? One fifteen. So I think we're good. Unless you guys have anything else you want to talk about? Yeah, it's a... Uh, I don't think so. I think this was a fun... Uh, kind of first run at doing a podcast. I think yeah, we went a little get longer. To, get to know each one of us. Yeah, we went a little longer than what we had planned. So we're going to try to keep these somewhere between 30 minutes and an hour um, going forward. But if there's anything you'd like our opinion on, leave a comment. Um, or suggestions. Yes, yeah, suggestions, feedback, whatever. Share us with your friends. Uh, like and subscribe. It'd mean a lot to us, especially starting out to see your feedback and whatnot and we're but, gonna get better i promise yeah uh colby's been spending a lot of time investing in uh getting the recording stuff set up to be a little bit easier to edit so we can get things out there a little faster and he's been working on some of his lighting i'm going to do some of the same over here um so we'll keep improving and working at it just stick with us hang in there and hopefully you're enjoying the content yeah it's been it's been fun i've um interested to definitely check out loki when it when it comes out, I think that that show is going to be wild. So we'll definitely have a lot of content out for that. Um, you know, we'll I just follow. watched Righteous Gemstones. I've been wanting to watch that. That which one is that? Fucking. It's a TV show. Hilarious. Um, it is about uh, like televangelist. The, yeah. Oh, okay. okay. It's, got, it's got John Goodman, Danny McBride, and the funny Bunky or Bump Bumper or. Fucking what's his name from uh, Workaholics? Oh, uh, Adam, 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 Adam Adam Divine. 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 Yeah, it's probably hilarious. What's He's, it called again? It is so... It's called Righteous Gemstones. I'm going to check that out. Do not watch it around your parents yeah. or children. Because there is a lot of male nudity. In the <laughs> it is, no, but it is no wonder so you like it. freaking funny. Yeah, I'll check it out. It's so yeah. funny. Like, I laughed. It's only... I think they just... I had heard from it because I listened to uh, um, the guys from Workaholics, their podcast. Yeah, they're uh, this great. is important. And they were talking to Adam about, you know, they're, they got approved for a season two. And I was like, damn. And I, so I forgot about it. Well, it's on HBO uh, Max. Uh, so I, I saw it and I started watching it the other day and just finished it today. That's got to be it comical is, gold. It is so Danny, freaking funny. Danny McBride. He's the creator of Dude, his. Everything. Yeah. His his entire part in uh, um, this is the end, you know, where all oh the celebrities. Oh, his yeah. his entire part is that is him ad libbing. Like they had yeah. they they had to cut so many times when he was on the screen on screen because he was making everybody laugh. And <laughs> He's dude, an idiot. yeah, yeah, I, I fell in love with him when he was on Hot Rod. Yeah, he was good in that. Uh, you've watched He's Bound and Down, right? Oh, absolutely. You know that oh, so you know funny. the chick that's in that. Um, Katie Mixon, she's from Pensacola. She's Pensacola. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, that's a good show. It's a good show. Best friends. That was her friend in high school. Oh, cool. But uh, another one thing I want to throw out there too, I forgot is if there is something that you'd be interested in us reviewing or reacting to, feel free to drop it to us too, because we are looking for ideas of what type of reactions and reviews. Yeah. Movie trailers. Yeah. I mean, music, anything. Yep. But just throw it at us and uh, we'll get some more videos up soon. Fan out. Cool. See you guys. Fan out.